Hello, this is a demonstration of the Kapow platform being used in a process automation example. In this case, the automation that's going to be put into place will be between a transportation management system, in this case, a system called Mercury Gate, and the FedEx website. Essentially, what happens is that the FedEx website has proof of delivery information, which can be pulled down in PDF form, which we'd like to be able to link back to individual load records in the transportation management system. It looks, the process when done manually looks like this. First, a human will log in to the transportation management system and they will go get a list of the loads in spreadsheet form right here. They'd save that off in a spreadsheet. That spreadsheet will end up looking like this. And then they go back over to the FedEx system and grab information about that load, a proof of delivery. That comes up in PDF form. And then they head back to the transportation management system and take the resulting PDF or the downloaded PDF and attach it to each load. So in this case, for example, if you go to that load, you'll see that there's no POD information there. So you'd go in here and then attach it. I won't do it so that we'll have a clean uh, example record to look at after the automation runs. That's the process that we're going to be automating. One thing that's worth noting is that the spreadsheet, as it's pulled down, has roughly 700 records on it. So this process would take a very large amount of time to pull all of the proof of deliveries down manually and then move them back over to the appropriate record in the transportation management system. So the automation that the Kapow platform is going to be taking care of here will be a real time saver. So here's the Kapow platform. I'm not going to explain the architecture. If an architecture explanation is needed, perhaps it's best to pause here while that's explained. What we're in now is the design studio where robots are designed. What a robot is, is essentially the series of steps that do the automation. It's a, a workflow, a series of workflow steps, essentially. So if you take a look at what we've got, we've got the beginnings of our robot here. It looks fairly simple, and I'll expand it here in a second. But essentially, it's the three basic steps that I just discussed. We get the loads from Mercury Gate. We then get all the proof of delivery PDFs from the FedEx site. And then we post the PDFs to Mercury Gate. Now, those, each one of those steps actually has a lot of sub-steps. This plus sign right here indicates that those have all been, those sub-steps have been grouped together so that we don't see them. So it's a little easier to get a high level picture of what's going on. So let me go ahead and expand everything here so you can get a sense. So here you can see that there's a lot more steps in the process. So let me go ahead and minimize these two steps to make things a little smaller in the short term here. And let's go in and start at the beginning and show you what this is going to look like as it runs through the Kapow platform. The first thing, obviously, that we're going to end up doing is heading out to the, uh, the transportation management system. So that's what these series of steps in here will do. We'll enter the user ID or have the robot enter the user ID and then click sign in and it'll actually log into the site. And then from there, we'll go to the part of the user interface where the generate Excel was. If you remember, there was a little icon that showed up on the screen. And that's what, when you press that, that's what generated the Excel. So now the robot is moving over to that part of the user interface. And you can see here it is. So there's the portion of the user interface that will generate the Excel spreadsheet. A quick word on what it's doing here, the little orange box is the result of a thing called a tag finder. What it's doing is we gave instructions to the robot as to how to find where that little Excel icon is. And there's a bunch of ways to specify the location of any given element. It's not just a, a pointing at a screen coordinate like a, a macro recorder. It's much more sophisticated than that. You can, you can look for tags by ID. You can look for them by your elements by ID. You can look for them by internal class name. That's a little technical. You can do it using very sophisticated matching techniques. You can do it relative to other tags. So for example, you can say, find me the third tag inside 
another given tag that you'd already defined. There's a lot of ways to find elements on a page, and that's a, a crucial thing in the platform because it allows uh, for a great deal of flexibility in terms of how elements on the screen are found. So now we've got to that part of the user interface, we're going to ahead and go ahead and click there and then watch what happens. I won't go through what each individual step's doing here. Essentially what it's doing is going through that part of the page, grabbing the data that's coming back in binary form, the Excel spreadsheet for, for technical folks. And then this is the result. So this is the same spreadsheet that I showed you earlier, but this is in our Excel viewer. One quick note here, previous versions of this of this uh, robot actually wrote that file to the file system. They wrote it to the hard drive. In this case, we haven't bothered to do that. We've disabled that. That's why this is gray. And we're actually going to store the uh, Excel spreadsheet in, in memory in a variable, actually. And so it'll never actually be written to the filing system. That's a sophisticated capability. And a follow-on video touches on it a little bit more in terms of how you might make use of that idea. So anyway, now we have the spreadsheet that it lists all of the loads that we want to get proof of deliveries for. So now what we want to do is swing over to the FedEx site. So we do pretty much the exact same thing here. A quick word on this thing. This little symbol here means it's a snippet. That means it's a group of steps. But in this case, that, the, that group of steps has been saved off to another separate file. And what that means is that that separate file can be reused across robots. So if you've got steps that you do a lot of times in a lot of robots, you don't have to re-input them every time. You can just use a snippet instead. It, it uh, simulates code reuse and allows, or will save some time in the long run. So anyway, let's go and see what happens. Clearly we're headed over to the FedEx site. So you'll see in the main window here in a second, that we've we're at the, the FedEx site and now we're going to go ahead and log in that's what this will do and then after that after we've logged in and we've got our session with the FedEx site established we'll go back to the spreadsheet so you can see here this is the current step it's on this is the step that it's working towards if I wanted to I could stop it here uh, and go through and see how things were working uh, it's the platform's really strong in terms of allowing you to work through various parts of a robot for testing and development. It's also got a debugger here. We won't touch on that, but the debugger would actually allow you to run this, the entire robot, if you wanted to, and, and get a sense for how it was running. If any errors were thrown, then you can immediately come back to the design part of the interface and figure out exactly where they were thrown. In any case, what we've done is we started over here in the FedEx site, and then we change back to the spreadsheet. And what we're going to do is pretty clear. We're going to start pulling out the uh, pro numbers and uh, other various pieces of data from the spreadsheet in order to go in and grab the proof of delivery. So one quick word here. This right here is a looping construct. And what that does is it's going to loop through every one of these lines in the spreadsheet. So if you watch, if I hit this, see what it's doing, it moves back and forth between the rows of the spreadsheet. So that's a really intuitive, easy way to loop through structures. And although I won't show one in this demo, you can do, you can loop through various other kinds of data. In fact, it's a really elegant way to loop through records in databases in, in Oracle SQL Server My, MySQL. Uh, it's wonderful for moving between records and relational databases. So anyway, we're in, back in Excel. At this point, we will grab the pro number and then we're going to go to the part of the interface the interface in the FedEx site and I showed this earlier where we enter the pro number so we've clicked on that step basically the rest of this is it the rest of these steps are going through the interface going through some intervening steps to get there so now we're at that point and we'll enter the pro number that's a pro number that we pulled from the spreadsheet so I think you can see pretty clearly what's going on there So now after entering the pro number, we're going to go ahead and have it save that as PDF. So I'll go back clear down to the end of the 
the line and you you can see what it did is it's now written that PDF, the 1103 load to the file system. So we've got one load out to the file system. Now under normal circumstances, we'd have it do all of the loads, but I, I don't wanna have to go through everything. The demo would take forever. So now we have one and we're gonna go back now to the third branch here and post that to Mercury Gate. So we're gonna go back to Mercury Gate at this point So we'll log into Mercury Gate and then go back to the spreadsheet again. And we'll do exactly what we did last time. We'll go ahead and grab the pro number again. And then we'll go to the part of the user interface where we can enter that in and then find it. So you can see the tag founder found, found the find button. So we're going to go through now and click on the find button and uh, go ahead and find that particular record. Now, one thing that I want to discuss here in the short term, just to give you a sense for some of what the, the product can do is in addition to doing the automation, we can pull information about the load out and write it to a database. So if you take a look at these steps right here, that's what they're doing. They're going through and actually grabbing information. Each one of these steps is grabbing. In this case, it'll grab the pickup state. In this case, it'll grab the drop state. In this case, the load number and so forth from the interface. And then those are stored into a database. So not only can you, you do process automation, but it can be used to harvest data. So now at this point, we want to go through and actually call up the part of the, uh, of the user interface that saves the uh, saves the PDF into Mercury Gate. So we'll go over to that part of the user interface. And if you remember, there was a part of the user interface that actually allowed you to click here. And that calls up another user interface element that then allows you to input the file. In this case, it'll point to the file that, uh, that we had already saved. So let's finish out through the rest of the UI here, of the rest of the, the path. Let it finish out. And then if we go back into the system, we'll find that, that for a load 11.03, that the proof of delivery has actually been moved off to the, or moved into the area where it needed POD information. You can see before it said no POD information. Now, through the automated process, the PDF has actually been attached. So again, to summarize, that's a, an automation example of using the Kapow platform to automate what would have been a very time consuming process if done manually. One other quick thing to touch on, let's take a look at one quick thing that you can do with the data that we saved. I won't go in too much into we're look, what we're looking at here, again, that's architectural. Uh, might be a wise time to pause if, if more discussion about what the management console and the robo servers are is needed. This demo is designed to primarily show the automation. But one thing that you can do is the data that we saved, the state that it was picked up in and the state that it was dropped in, for example, was written to a database. And the platform has a analysis and visualization mechanism called a cap zone. And a cap zone is made up of caplets that you can design. And a caplet is a lightweight, small application that can consume data or resources that are pulled in by robots. So what I'm gonna show you is a quick caplet that was designed to consume that data that uh, was written in the, share, in the database portion of the demo that I just gave. So I've done a prior run of the data and this is these are the results. So it's showing you what state things were picked up in and what state things were dropped off in. So for example, I can start doing things like a quick analysis of if I wanna find out for things that are picked up in California, where are they dropped off? So you can see that it changes on the fly and shows you 
it's 100% because we're looking at just California pickups. And then we can also do the same, obviously, for last drop as well if we want. If we want, want to say, okay, where are the Missouri? Anything that was dropped off in Missouri, they all came from Missouri. So let's try another state. We'll try Pennsylvania. If it was dropped off in Pennsylvania, where did it come from? In that case, as you would expect, most of it is reasonably close. New Jersey in particular, North Carolina, some from Arkansas, a little further away. But the whole point is that the platform can do not only the automation that was shown, but it can also be used to extract data and then do some analysis. The caplets can be used to do analysis on the data as well.